welcome back to another episode of the preseason stoke hype whatever you want to call it i'm trying to take some time to share some information about topics or other things that kind of surround skiing but stuff that i might not talk about once the season actually gets underway and we're kind of just going around vlogging and skiing so in this episode i wanted to talk about the camera gear that i used to produce the ski portions of the videos this isn't an all-encompassing video on all of the camera gear that i use in a vlog something like my drone or little different lenses that i might use in other situations this is really just when i go out to ski for the day what are the cameras that i'm taking with me to help show the skiing side of it so i did a video on this last season as well and three main pillars haven't changed but there are some new accessories and some new styles that i've developed throughout last year that i'm excited to share and just throughout the years and years that i have been skiing and filming and sort of self-filming kind of narrowed my stuff down to a kit that i feel like is lightweight but still produces sort of high quality results and just does what i needed to do to uh get what I need out of the, the ski day. The most important camera in my kit is my head cam. This is the GoPro Max. This is the predecessor to the GoPro Fusion, which was GoPro's original 360 camera. I would say for 90% of the ski day, here's my helmet sits right here on the front of my helmet. So it's not on the top up here. I see a lot of people with a camera up here, you know, it's right on the front. And then I'll typically, once it's here, I will kind of just tilt it down, like just literally a little bit, like like that. Not really super paramount, but that is how I have it mounted. There are really three main reasons why I use the GoPro Max as my main head camera over something like a traditional GoPro. The first reason is the wide field of view. You can really get like a super wide, immersive, field of view because this is shooting in 360 i never shoot it in like normal hero mode i'm always rolling in the 360 mode the second reason is that it is a hundred percent accurate there have been so many times when i was growing up using a normal gopro something like this i just feel like the success rate of actually capturing a shot was very very low the camera was either pointed right at the ground where all you see is my skis and you don't see the horizon in the run or it was pointed too high up and you just it was like this floating camera that was just looking out in the distance and you saw no skis no poles stuff like that so with what i do being a one-man sort of band and a lot of the runs and stuff a lot of times it's like kind of my only shot to do it whether it's a hike that i went on or it's an untracked power run i just can't afford to mess up the capture of that clip. So with the 360 camera, it just makes it so I know even if it's not positioned perfectly, I'll still be able to extract something that works and tell the story. I am totally fine with sacrificing a little bit of quality at this point and resolution if it means that I'm guaranteed gonna get the shot. I can't let the gear get in the way of telling the story. And the third reason why I love the GoPro Max is the ability to reframe it for social media purposes. Now, with the sort of ever evolving, changing landscape of social media with YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, and TikTok, it's very important to also share some stuff in a native nine by 16 resolution, which is something you would see on your phone. Now, if you use a regular GoPro and you're shooting widescreen stuff, it's very hard to get it like, completely proper for social media. So with the GoPro Max and the FX Reframe plugin in Premiere, I can basically make this into a normal nine by 16 frame and have the best of both worlds, which is very, very important. So as much as I enjoy the resolutions of the Hero and stuff like that, and just the general quality, the fact that I can have all different formats in this head cam is what makes it so versatile for me as a creator, mostly here on YouTube, but also trying to expand my reach into the other platforms. Now the other 20% that this camera gets utilized is with a very long selfie stick and just like shooting time lapses. So I have the Backpack 270 Pro pole. This is a very, very long pole. There's three sections. I think it can get almost like up to 10 feet long. And when you put the GoPro Max on the end of this, I can get those really cool sort of third person drone looking shots that people ask all the time, am I flying a drone or how did I get that shot? Because the GoPro Max actually the software removes the selfie stick out of the shot. So you don't actually see the pole and it just creates this, you know, floating shot that's just as great to add in 
with everything else. Because this shoots 360, I can also get really cool time lapses off the lift that I can really keyframe and add them so they like spin around and you get like this very immersive feel of where we're at. I use time lapses all the time in my work to help one, show the passing of time, but two, also um, sort of establish what lift we're at and like how the day is progressing. So time lapses are very important to me and to be able to shoot them in 360 on this pole, I can kind of get really unique shots is, is also really fun. And lastly, a new accessory that I'm very excited to utilize this winter is the GoPro boom mount. This is a carbon fiber arm that is going to sit on my helmet, kind of something like this. I will call this the like narwhal mount or like, I don't know, unicorn mount. But the idea with this is kind of getting a shot that's gonna look back at myself. The max is gonna sit at the end like this. Again, the pole is going to disappear and it's gonna kind of create this almost floating camera out in front, but not like super far out sort of thing. So again, something I'm excited to add to the kit this year in another way I plan on getting creative with the GoPro Max. The biggest reason I love the Max is I feel like it's very easy to use just filming. You kind of just set your settings, there's not much to it. You just hit record and then a lot of the work and stuff actually comes in in the post-production, in the editing side of things. But I just know I trust this camera so much that yeah, I know that I can capture what I need with the Max. The second pillar of my camera gear that I use on the mountain is a normal GoPro. And this is the new GoPro Hero 12, which I have not used for skiing yet, obviously. And I also have a few Hero 11s, which I honestly haven't used these for skiing either. All last year I was shooting on the GoPro Hero 10. It wasn't until this summer that I got hooked up with some 11s and then the 12 came out. So I got hooked up with the 12 as well. So I haven't actually used these exact models for skiing yet, but I think the fundamental principles and the way I use it is gonna remain the same. The most common way I utilize a GoPro is with GoPro's very own pole mount. I get asked all the time, for some reason, why how, or how I mount the GoPro to the end of my pole. And GoPro literally makes a ski pole mount. So if I could recommend one mount for your GoPro in your skiing, it's the pole mount. This just clips on here. I have a ski pole here, which isn't, this isn't actually the pole that I'm using, but it doesn't matter. And I typically take my pole and I just slide this right underneath the basket. So now I have a really sort of nice shot that looks back at me for slow-mo stuff, for just like, again, another, another angle that I can use and throw in with the Max. And then what's really cool is this like a little swivel design. You just click this quick release and now it's pointing the other way. So if I do any sort of follow cams or even if I just wanna get like a B-roll shot or maybe a time-lapse off the lift with this camera, this is just a nice mounting point to have. Now you have a pole and you're not trying to do it like with your hand handheld. So most of the day, I literally will just leave a GoPro on the pole mount and just stick this whole apparatus in my pocket. So that way when I need something, I can pull it out, it's ready to go and I just stick it on and I'm, I'm ready to roll. So the other case that I'll use a GoPro for is for any sort of talking head vlogging shots and especially when combined with the media mount or media mod just to give you a little bit better audio. Again, it's kind of catering more towards vlogging style. So my plan is to kind of keep one of these just set up in my bag with a battery in it so I can rip this out. The settings are ready to go. And now I can just talk, say something quick to the camera, put the put the GoPro away, and now I'm, I'm, I'm ready to roll without having to set up my bigger camera, which can just be a little bit more clunky at times. There's not really a whole ton of accessories I use with the normal Hero apart from the pole mount, but something I am stoked to see how it works and fits in the kit is the Max Lens Mod 2.0. No, this is brand new to work only with the Hero 12. It provides like 177 degree field of view. So I use this for mountain biking this summer a little bit and was just overall impressed with how wide you can get. So this could be a replacement for the head cam, but for the reasons I mentioned with the 360 camera, I don't necessarily see it replacing it for me. And then the other thing I use are ND filters. This kind of deserves its own video. This is a topic you can find on YouTube of why you use ND filters and stuff like that. But I do really enjoy using NDs because I just feel like it takes your footage to the next level. It makes it look professional even out of a GoPro. So I will utilize these. They can be a little quirky. And so there are some best practices with it. But again, just showing you guys what I use. And then lastly are just the batteries. I have probably too many batteries at this point, especially because I don't, I don't use the Hero as much as I use the Max, but I have a good amount of batteries at this point. There's even one more I can't fit in my hand. 
But again, these are all the Enduro batteries. If you buy one of the newer GoPros, it just comes with these Enduro batteries now. But if you have like a nine or maybe a 10, I definitely recommend getting the cold weather batteries. They last so much longer. The Hero 12 has like a whole different power management system. So they claim twice as long battery life as the 11 and stuff. So anyways, I'll probably bring two of these, maybe three, just so again, I don't run out if I'm filming a lot. Pillar number two. I have now switched over to the Hero 12 to talk about the camera that I use for just about everything else that I was just filming on. Canon EOS R6 Mark II. This is what I use for, yeah, everything else. Me walking in front of the camera, anything that's like in the van or any sort of shots that don't look like they're filmed on a GoPro is filmed with this. The lens that I have found works the best for what I do is the 24 to 70 f 2.8. I would love to vlog at 16 millimeters, it's just a lot wider. My problem with the 16 mil is that the zoom only goes to 35. And I find that for the B-roll stuff, the cinematic stuff, it just doesn't give me enough versatility when I'm out on the mountain. So 24 to 70, 24 is still wide to talk to the camera, but I can punch into 70 to just get a little bit more juicy sort of cinematic stuff. I use a Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. I have it mounted on this Joby Gorillapod. I have the biggest love hate with these because after like two months, they just become so flimsy and loose. They never are straight, but you can't vlog without one. This is how I'm able to set the camera down. I can wrap it around railings, wrap around a tree if I need to. It just makes it so I have a little tripod with me. And then because this has a flip screen and stuff, now like when I'm actually vlogging and looking like a doofus, I have something to kind of extend it out, stabilize the camera a bit more, get it away from me, talk to the camera, have the mic. Yo, what's up guys? We are going skiing today. Put everything away, unscrew it, pop stuff off. And now I'm like, now, if I just am shooting some B-roll, I don't need that. And I can just kind of do things like that. Perhaps my favorite part about this camera is the built-in ND filter. I talked about NDs with the GoPro. Again, it's definitely worth, if you're into this sort of stuff, looking up what you need an ND for. But because I have the mount adapter here, one of the new things I added is the built-in variable ND like adapter for this camera. It just makes it so nice to not have to carry an extra ND mess with it, put it on, take it off, all this sort of stuff. So when I'm skiing, this whole thing gets taken down. I take the mic port out to protect it here. I will release the mic here. And then this all just sort of fits into my GoPro bag. Just there's really no protection with it. There's no method. I just kind of shove it in the main compartment. It fits just well enough. They're weatherproof, all that sort of stuff that they're, you know, they can pretty resistant. At the end of the day, this is just, it's the tool that I use to, to do what I do. So I am now going to swap back to the Canon and talk about the bag that houses everything. The bag I use is the GoPro Day Tripper. I really think this is one of the best backpacks to use for skiing. For me, it's just the perfect size where it's small, it's light, but it's still pretty protective and has a good amount of pockets. There is nothing worse than trying to ski with a very large backpack. It's very inconvenient for getting on the lift with other people. I have a bigger backpack that some I used to use and it's like, you're literally hitting people as you try to get on the lift. It's just, it kind of sucks. So now that I've, I have a relatively simple kit where the, the camera just, I just shove it in here. I can put this tripod, oh, it's used right here. The tripod stands up perfectly just on the side here. And now at least everything is inside this sort of bag. I can put accessories in this top part. I can fit like this other, you know, if I bring a, a spare GoPro, it'll fit right here in this top part. The max lens mod can go here. I mean, this isn't really meant to be like a review of this backpack, but this is what I use to carry everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is now a mess. I kind of just scattered stuff around. Batteries, GoPros, you know. <laughs> but let me know if you guys like this stuff if you're interested in it and i could make this like a three-part series where part two is my actual settings that i use with the cameras and part three could be like the actual editing side of things and how to get i don't know how to just sort of maximize the image i'm no master at it but i could just share what i do if that helps you or maybe doesn't help you but thank you guys for watching i'll see all of you guys hopefully tonight in the live stream and if not uh, in the next episode so take it easy fam happy wednesday peace out Thank you.